Hey, it's Michael Saul, but everybody calls me Tiny. This video is only the Dow is above the 200-day moving average, plus my Super Bowl pick. You know you want it. This is Stock Market Analysis for the week of February 4th, 2019. If you would like to receive free intraweek updates, go to www.attackthemarkets.com and sign up. Put in your first name, your best email address, and you will be on the distribution list. Like I said, it's free. Facebook group, also free. Facebook.com slash groups slash Attack the Markets. If you like what you're hearing on this video, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment and to never miss a video when one is uploaded hit subscribe and smash the bell and you will be notified when i upload a new video all right so before we talk about the market i just want to talk about these charts if you've been watching my videos for a while you know that i'm a fan of tc2000 i was using tc TC2000 for a while. And then I had a, a little problem with my membership. I had no idea what was going on. I called them. They said, no, there's no problem. And then I still couldn't access it or so whatever. So I started using StockCharts.com. But the challenge with the free version of StockCharts.com is you have to format the chart every time you change it. And it was a pain in the neck. So I took some snapshots and I was showing them. And I got some good feedback on that. I, I have no idea why. I, I wasn't able to adjust them or anything. I was just showing the charts. But uh, then I got an email from somebody, and they said, you know, the stockcharts.com is, is, are nice and everything, but what would you use if you had to use a totally free program? I'm not really happy with the charts that my broker provides, so what would you use? So this is what I would use if I had to use a free charting program. It's freestockcharts.com, also a warden product. And I believe I could sign in using my login and, and password and uh, get the uh, get the upgraded features that I get on my paid version of TC2000, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to show you a totally free version, at least on this video. I may go, I may continue to go forward with it um, in in the future videos, but if I don't, uh, I'm just going to show it at least this week. Okay, so you can add the moving averages, you can add a ton of indicators if that's what floats your boat, right? You can even have the Ichimo Cloud, Ichimoku Cloud here. Right, if you if you like that stuff, and nothing wrong with that. I'm just, uh, you know, I, I like to use the cloud for my analysis. Sometimes I'll throw it in with the inner circle stuff, but uh, for the most part, I'm just a moving average guy with an occasional oscillator. All right, so I have the 200-day moving average in white. I have the 50-day in this cyan-type color. I guess it's cyan or baby blue. I don't know. And then I have the 20 EMA in red. These are just the colors that I'm used to for 20, <laughs> over 20 years of plotting them. All right, so let's take a look at the Dow. We're going to start with the DIA. And like the rest of the majors, we have this re-reversal. And we've been climbing higher since uh, the end of last year, right, the week of Christmas, uh, or the week after Christmas, whatever it is. And now, at least for the Dow, we are over the 200-day moving average. But it, but like I said in the title of this video, it's the only ma one of the majors that is. Okay, so if we get a trend line going, <clears throat> we could start from up here, and we could come down here. And we could see that even though we're above the 200-day moving average, we now have potential resistance right here from a trend line. And a trend line is only valid when you can hit three points. Okay, Any two points can be connected. That doesn't make a trend line. However, when you're making a triangle, if you have one line connecting three uh, points, then the second line can be two points. I don't know why... I'm going into school here. But anyway, but here are uh, three points here that are connecting. So this is a valid trend line. And even though we're above the 200-day moving average, you could see Friday's session is a small doji. So this is potential resistance right here. Now, my opinion is we are still going to go back down and retest that low. The government shutdown is, is over. Uh, the trade war with China is cooling down. This, but but there are tariff there are tariff deadlines coming up in March. There's also the government shutdown uh, deadline, right? Where if the wall isn't built, and uh, is he going to call uh, for a national emergency? Is he going to do another shutdown? I don't believe another shutdown is coming. I believe the uh, unfortunately the consequences of that were too severe, and I do not think that the president wants to deal with that again. So maybe he declares a national emergency. What will that do with the market? I don't know. Right? I, really, I'm being <laughs> as, for, as forthright as possible. I don't know what that's going to do with the market because the shutdown didn't do anything. The market continued to rise, right? People were going without paychecks 
for a few weeks, and the market continued to rise. So, um, but I do believe from a technical basis that we have a still have a good shot that we're going back down. Now, do we get a full retest of those lows? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we get a partial retest, but I, I believe that there is still a good likelihood that we're going back down, and here's why. If you look at the other indices, okay, other major indices, you have the S&P, which is still below its 200-day moving average, but right there. And it also has a, a V-reversal. Like I said, the majors have the reversals. And V-reversals, whoa, are rare. Now, they're more common, they're the more common rare, all right, on the downside, because volatility tends to be mean reverting, and volatility tends to swell on the downside. So when you get a big push on the downside, usually you can get a sharp, uh, usually you have a chance, sorry, uh, of getting a better chance of getting, there we go, a sharp reversal than on the upside, okay? So just because it's rare doesn't mean it can't happen. But uh, this is, there's a lot of balance here that it needs to get through, all right, this set up for a couple of months. And right now, we're basically right in the middle of it. So if we go up to the 200-day moving average and it does hold, um, yeah, we could absolutely turn back down and try to uh, get a retest of that low. I do think that it is possible that will happen, like I said, and I, that's what I'm still looking at. That all being said... I do not have a sell signal here. So it's great, and yeah, I'll look at this, and oh, Tiny thinks we're going to go back to lows. Great, but I'm not saying get short here. I can't. I don't have a pattern. What I want to see is I want to see a consolidation, preferably, that breaks to the downside. But I'll take a one-candle pattern or a multi-candle pattern or some sort of reversal pattern here where I can uh, dig my heels in, I can lean against, and uh, I, can, I can do it that way uh, rather than just guessing at, okay, here's a short, right? I, I like a pattern to lean against. This way I, could, I know where my stop is because I know where I'm wrong. All right, that's what I'm looking to do. Here's the cues. NASDAQ also at the, uh, above, I'm sorry, below the 200-day moving average. We also have, see, now this broke through its potential downtrend line, okay? But notice it's sitting right on it. So this looks different than the Dow, which is right at it right here. Okay, here's the Russell. <clears throat> so the Russell lagging a little bit, but it's not really anything like, oh, okay, well, the Russell's lagging, so... Uh, that's why I think we're going down, and not really. It's lagging to the uh, to the rest of the majors, but also broke this trend line here. And this is actually up a little bit above the trend line. Doesn't mean it can't reverse back down. And here's the mid caps. Right. So mid caps don't really have a good, like the spy. They don't really have a good angled line, but we could still do a horizontal line here. All right, you got this. Right up here. That's also right around where the 200-day moving average is. So let's look at some of the sectors. See the semiconductors into the 200-day moving average. Look at some of the stocks there. Clyde Tanker, which was uh, on its arse, right down pretty sharply, had the lower low. See, this is what I was looking for the majors to do, actually to retest the lows, go below the lows, and then start to rally. But anyway, so now we're over the 200-day moving average. So if the market does not turn back down and instead continues to go higher, this is one I want to watch. How about NVIDIA? There was bad news with NVIDIA and slowing sales and everything else. I mean, this one's really come off its highs. Uh, the people that were buying into it, thinking, believing the $500 price targets that people were talking about, whatever. Uh, now it's down here. <clears throat> Could be setting up for more downside, but what I want to look at is I want to put, I want to draw some patterns in it if I can, All right, like this, and I could do this, All right, and then I'm looking to see which way it's going to go from here, but if it was to go lower, there is a gap here which started this monster move, and that comes in down here in the 105s. How about Intel? Yeah, just sloppy. Then you got the banks. 
Okay, so the banks, well, talk about a V reversal, but still in, in between the 50 and the 200 days, so definitely not out of the woods yet. Bank of America popped above the 200-day moving average but came back down last week. Here's Bank of New York sitting on top of the 200-day moving average. What about like J.P. Morgan consolidating here? See, I like these consolidations. Right now, we're between the 50 and the 200 days, so I can't get biased to the upside. I can't say I'm only looking to the upside. But uh, it doesn't mean that I won't take a long side trade if it sets up. There's a nice little coil here. So if this can pop above these highs, may get a move up to the 200-day moving average. Here's Citigroup. Here's Northern Trust. Okay, so here's Northern Trust. Back down to the uh, 50 and the 20 EMA right here. See if this turns from here. Again, it's more of a coil than anything. Can't be biased to the upside because it's below the 200-day. Here's Zion's Bank Corporation. Watch the 200-day here. Let's look at some of the glamour stocks. All right, Amazon's sloppy here. <clears throat> I'm not interested in this until it decides to tip its hand. Here's Apple coming off its bottom here. All right, see if uh, with the, 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 the surprised Wall Street, you know, Tim Cook set it up pretty nicely. Great article by Paul Schatz if, if you read his blog. <clears throat> or get his email. I don't know which one he sent it in, but it was nice. Uh, still a long way to go here. Facebook, the Zuck book, as I like to call it, right into the 200-day moving average. I love the way it pushed up. Everybody was rah, 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 buying. Then it sold back down. <clears throat> Not sure Facebook is out of the woods yet. Uh, this was definitely a good start, but we'll see. Does this gap get filled? Maybe it gets filled 50% and then turns and goes, but First step is getting above the 200-day, and so far it's only gotten above that uh, intraday last uh, two days of last week. All right, that's Facebook. How about Netflix? Yeah, see, Netflix, see, I like this pattern because we're right on top of, what, the 200-day moving average. That means that we are at a key decision area. This is very, very important because... Key decision areas are places where something happens, right? AKA inflection points, whatever you want to call them. All right, so we're going to move one way or the other from here. From now, I am not going to uh, give an opinion on which way we're going to go, but I will say I'm going to be watching either way. I mean, look, it's got some decent upside to first resistance. If it does pop out of the <laughs> to the upside and to the downside, it can go back down to the 50-day moving average. So. It looks like it's coiled and ready to go. I would definitely have this one on your watch list. Maybe even maybe it's maybe even a straddle or strangle candidate. How about Tesla? A lot of news all over with Tesla. It's just too sloppy. Just not interested in it. His Caterpillar also sloppy. His John Deere acting better, but overall in more of a range than anything. All right. So let's look at bonds. TLT. Okay, so bonds have stepped up a little bit, but still just hanging around this congestion. So still definitely bonds are not out of the woods yet. Like, oh, look, we're going to get a bond rally. Yeah, it doesn't really, doesn't really look like that just yet for me. Okay, so uh, I am not ready to just call the bottom in bonds just yet, although we've obviously had a pretty nice bounce. How about gold? Yeah, gold I got wrong. I did not call a bottom in gold and look how gold has been running good chance that it can get to these highs i like the next pullback to watch for a buying opportunity in gold but watch for this pullback slash pause well this is great mike swanson nailed this one uh i missed it if we look at the miners you know, even the miners have a, a nice impulse here so what i'm looking for is a pause or pullback for a long side trade i mean this there's some congestion here that it has to get through but how it how usually price will get through these uh, levels is they'll pull back and they'll stair step up all right what about oil yeah oil on a nice bounce as well since the beginning of the year definitely doesn't look like bonds uh, or especially gold so i want to see what it does uh, as it's approaching resistance which it is up here all right so that's oil now the big old Super Bowl pick, but first a recap. Still don't think we're out of the woods because the Dow is the only of the majors that is above the 200-day moving average. I think that there is an opportunity for us to turn back down. I'm not guessing at it. 
I want to see a pattern, a minimum one candlestick pattern, but I would like to see a multi-day pattern, or maybe it sets up in a multi-week pattern, something like this, consolidation. All right, if we're above the 200-day moving average, do I change my mind? Well, I definitely get off the uh, still a good chance to test back down thinking, but until we clear this horizontal ledge here, I'm not really looking to get uh, uber bullish here. Okay, again, uh, just to be clear, this action here, just because I think we're going to roll back over and retest those lows, first of all, it doesn't mean it's going to happen, but of course not. But second of all, it doesn't mean I'm staying away from long side trades. I'm just more cautious. When we're under the 200 day moving average, I am just more cautious. All right, Super Bowl time. So here's the deal Tom Brady playing in his ninth, uh, the Rams who I really, really like. I think the C.J. Anderson story is great. <clears throat> I am a big fan of Goff. I just, I mean, I really, really love the Rams, but I just think that um, in the end, I think McVay's going to be outcoached by Belichick. I think that uh, despite Tom Brady saying that he's going to play for another 50 years, or I mean, he's not really saying that long, right? But uh, despite Tom Brady saying he's going to be playing for a while, et cetera, I, I just think he knows that his time is, is limited. His time is short. I think he's going to pull out all the stops, do whatever he can. And, I mean, the game against the Chiefs, it just shows how he's, if not, I mean, I think he's the best, but I had a discussion with a friend of mine yesterday who said that, it's tough to call him the best, and whatever. I'm not going to get into that argument. I think he's the greatest of all time. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean he's going to win the Super Bowl. He didn't last year, right? But <clears throat> I think the Rams are a different team than the Eagles. And, uh, well, I really love them, and I will probably be rooting for the Rams. I think the Patriots are going to win. So my pick is the Patriots, and uh, even though I am not gambling, wagering, betting, whatever you want to call it, on the game, I would lay the points with the Patriots. Um, I think they're going to win. I also think the over is a good play as well. Of course, this is for news information only, just an opinion. All right? I'm not a bookie, and I'm not placing any bets on the game. But I am going to watch it. And uh, like I said, I'll probably be, be rooting for the Rams, but I just think the Patriots are, uh, are, are going to pull it out. So that's it. Any questions? And, of course, your uh, opinions are welcome. Let's see if I get this one right. It'll be a rarity. Um, if you want to contact me, it's tiny at attackthemarkets.com with any questions. And I will talk to you in the intraweek updates on next week's video.